What's up guys, JC here. Welcome back to the iNav playlist. Uh, this is the third video. The first video was what GPS module I recommend. The second video was what flight controllers I recommend. Now I will show you how to wire it. Even if you did not purchase a GPS module like this, the wiring should be very, very similar. So don't worry, um, you should still be covered. If you did decide to go with the Hollybro uh, module like this, then it comes pre-wired and you get a little harness like this. Now I did have a uh, like a four pin connector on the end but what I did was cut it off and I soldered in these single servo connectors and then heat shrinked it so it gave me something like this that I could just plug into pin headers instead of the little plastic JST connector. If you decided to go with one like this then it came with a uh, JST 6 pin 1.0 millimeter spacing connector and it had the same connector on the other side. What you guys will do is uh, more than likely just cut the end off like I've done here and then this will just plug into it like this. Now uh, in this video I will be using this one for two reasons. For one the wiring is a little bit more complicated because they didn't color code these wires. The second reason is because I lost my uh, wiring diagram for this one. I have no idea where it's at. But just know that they both have the same wires. You will have a power, a ground, a transmit, a receive, SEL, and SDA. So six wires on both of these. They're going to be wired exactly the same. Now what I have done here is instead of using this, I created my own little color-coded harness to help you guys out. Regardless of what flight controller you have, you need to find first a power. Well, let me, if you bought this, then you're going to get this paper with it. And here is the wiring diagram. There's only one connector on it, so there's only six wires. Now this picture isn't of the module sitting like this. This is actually a picture of it being upside down. You can actually tell from this little chip right here is this right here. And there's the connector right there, so we will hold it this way. So the very first wire on this connector is going to be ground, which I have as my black wire. That's simple. You can run this to any ground on your PDB. It's not going to matter. Uh, then for 5 volt, which is my red wire, run this to any 5 volt pin on your flight controller. Um, this can be any of the input pins, any of the output pins. It doesn't matter. Now for TXD and RXD. This is going to a UART port. If you do have a flight controller with the CP2102 driver, like I've mentioned in many of my other videos, uh, this means that UART number one is tied into the USB, so you can't use that device and iNav at the same time. So what I'm going to recommend doing is wiring these two wires to a UART port, but not on UART number one. That's if you have a CP2102 driver flight controller. If your flight controller has a virtual COM port, it doesn't matter. You can place it on any UART you want. So holding this in the same way as this, uh, my green wire is going to be the transmit. Now, if you look at the pinout for whatever flight controller you have, for example, I'm just using the Omnibus, but here is my transmit pin for UART 1 and transmit for UART 2. I chose to use UART number 2 and uh, the thing is, whenever you connect devices with UARTs, this is a transmit pin, but it needs to, that means the signal is coming out of this pin. But you need it to go into this GPS module, which means that would be the receive. So don't wire TX to TX and RX to RX. It's actually flip flopped. So the TX is actually going to go to the RX and the RX will actually go to the TX. So the, like I said, my green wire is the transmit, but if we look right here, I placed it on this last pin, and that last pin is the receive. The next pin is the receive, which is going to be my yellow wire and the yellow wire is one wire up from the receive. One wire up from the receive is the transmit. 
Now all that leaves is SDA and SCL. So uh, whatever flight controller you have, locate those pins. For me, uh, my SCL pin is located right here and SDA is right here. So my SDA is going to be this white wire, almost the one on the end, but not quite. And for these, it's not like the UARTs. You're not flip-flopping these. You want SDA going to SDA and you want SEL going to SEL. That's why my white wire on this is going right here to SDA. And then SEL, the one on the very end, which is my blue wire, is going to SEL on my flight controller, which is right here. And that's it, it's that simple. Like I said, for you guys that chose to use this GPS module with your wires, uh, I can't remember because I don't have the wiring diagram, but I do know that red is positive. Oh, and that's one thing I need to mention. Uh, for you guys, and I hope to God you, you're still, you didn't skip through this video, you need 3.3 volts for this module. Uh, all flight controllers have a 3.3 volt power source. For example, some flight controllers have dedicated pins for 3.3 volts. I don't know if you can see that, but it says... Uh, 3v3 which is this pin here on the dodo uh, some flight controllers don't have a dedicated pin for example on the x racer f303 I, this would be horrible for a gps build but i'm just saying that you get a pad instead of a pin so you would just solder that wire right to that pad and if your flight controller does not have a dedicated uh, pin or pad but it does have the spectrum satellite receiver port just know that on every single one of these uh, spectrum ports, this pin on the left is always 3.3 volts. So you can uh, solder your wire directly to that pin or solder a, you know, a three pin connector on there and just plug it in, however you wanna do it. But just know that's always 3.3 volts. Uh, so like I was saying, you guys with this one, you're going to have 3.3 uh, volts to the red wire. The black wire is ground. The yellow and green wire is going to be your UART transmit and receive. Which one is which, I couldn't tell you. Uh, just try them both. If it doesn't work, then just flip-flop the wires and it should work. Uh, if you do get it wrong, it's not going to damage anything, so don't worry. And then the orange and blue wire is going to be your SEL and SDA. Uh, which one is which, once again, I couldn't tell you. Just try them both. Uh, but you shouldn't have to worry because like I said when you purchase this it comes with the wiring diagram like this I just don't have mine the next thing you need to know is this flight controller when I plug in the USB cable it provides power to uh, all the 5 volt power pins as well as the 3.3 volt pins uh, which I'm not using but I'm just saying it would work on this too it also provides signal to the SEL and SDA now that's not the case on all flight controllers. Uh, that's something important that I'm trying to tell you. Uh, on some flight controllers, you you do have to plug in a LiPo battery to provide power and signal to all of your pins. Uh, so just be aware of that. Now I can plug in my USB and test my GPS out, um, but for some of you, you will have to plug in a LiPo battery. Now the last thing you need to know is uh, the solid green light means that you are getting power to the module, but there is also supposed to be a blinking blue light. And that means that uh, well, you're not going to get that blinking blue light until you set everything up in iNav, which is going to be the next video. So look in the description below for that video. And uh, you also have a cold start time, which is like 30 seconds, something like that. Um, but I'll explain all of that in the next video. So that's going to do it for this one. I'll see you there.